Hi, hello everybody. Uh, today is Wednesday, November 9th, one o'clock. Uh, let's see, call to order, one o'clock, and roll call. Let's see, I've got Anna White here. Yeah. Um, Chris Bridges. Here. Okay. Um, hey, Ed, Ed Troll on Zoom. I'm, I'm here. Bob Rhodes, is that you on the phone? Bob, I can't hear you if that's you on the phone. He's muted, just in case. He doesn't know. Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll come back to the phone. And then um, Addison Houston is going to be late today. And then I see Lisa Scott, uh, council liaison, Scott Anderson. Hi, welcome. You have your parks board hat on? I do indeed. It's the honorary parks board hat. All right. And Bob Rhodes, you're still muted. Bob, I don't know how you can unmute yourself, but I see your name up there. So, all right. Um, approval of meeting agenda. I need a motion to approve the meeting agenda. I'll um, make that motion. I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, Bob, you're still on mute. So, <laughs> okay, Bob, there you are. Can you hear me, Bob? Yes, can I can hear you. Okay, great. All right. Um, I need a motion to approve the minutes from October 12th. A motion? I second. Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No. Bob? Okay, well, all right, let's see. Announcements. Any announcements? Um, I don't have anything to announce. Uh, Sarah, any public communication? I didn't receive any written public communication. And there is no public online. All right. All right, old business. So skate park. Um, Jenny Fletcher working on bids for the skate park. Roglands is actually um, was interested and they're actually submitting a bid. We haven't gotten that bid yet. Um, their, their contact there, uh, was hopeful to have it done very soon. That was on Monday, and as of today, he hadn't submitted it yet. So, going to wait on that bid. If uh, that bid's out of our range, I I don't know what we're going to do. I don't, Scott. I don't really know, Lisa. Scott. I don't know what the next step is. Um, this is our last hope is Roglin to approve um, or to submit the bid. That's going to be within budget. So we'll just wait and see what they have to say. And then go from there. Okay. What, what uh, is the is. what is the budget for the skate park? Eight thousand. Eight thousand. Mm. Okay. Okay. Got a little wiggle room, but that's what we asked for. So, yes, yeah, Scott. Nope. Okay. Oh, yeah. sorry. All right. So the next on the list is the Chinook toilet. Um, I emailed everybody. The information at CXT, there's um, a brochure, looks like this in your email. Uh, this is a company based out of Spokane. They are a prefabricated toilet. They're really efficient. And John Wagner, um, well, let me step back. The city of Montesano put one of these in a number of years ago. And uh, John Wagner um, wanted to take a look at it, and he did, our public works guy. He went out there and he's like, Kristen, these are really awesome. They're easy to clean, the maintenance is low, they're well built. Um, so he he was like, Yeah, let's look at the prices of these. So I went ahead and contacted this company, and they're out of Spokane, and they gave us a couple of options that we thought we I talked to John Wagner and thought what we needed. We needed two toilets, they would be probably unisex, not a not a male or female, but just two unisex bathrooms. Um, and the two that came back were the Cortez and the Denali. Did you guys get a chance to look at this? And yes, I did, Bob? yes. Yeah, great. So basically the difference between the two, um, the Cortez isn't as fancy as the Denali. The Denali has a higher pitched roof. It's got more windows, uh, but the price difference was about $30,000. Right, I saw that. Yeah, so uh, I'm like, okay, Cortez looks fantastic. So um, I just want you guys to take a look at this. Um, this is kind of what we thought we were going to, um, what we hopefully will do. If council 
first of all, council needs to approve uh, the budget, which they haven't done yet. But fingers crossed if they do approve it, this is part of what we've asked for. So we're already just kind of getting our information together. These units are six months out. So once the order's placed, it's six That's months out. Um, I did contact another company called Green, Green Flushables out of Vancouver. You know, just to get another bid. They were, the one that they sent me was $170,000. So not at all. And it was about the same size. Everything was the same. Not interesting. Obviously a little bit different, not, not the same Denali Cortez, but yes, the same, two side by side. Well, thank you for shopping around. That. But it was $170,000. And so I, I I really don't think that that's something Where that was we should. Cortez at? Uh, is that a Spokane? Or? No, I mean the price point. Or were they 60000 is base, and then you have to add some things um, like a baby changing station. There's some other. So if you just take a look, I sent you guys all the information. You can see the check off, and I figured John Wagner could kind of guide and figure out what what they need. Um, the other nice thing to have is you know when it comes time to it, picking out colors, and so there's some color options and facade, but. That's what I have for the flushable toilet. So we're definitely getting that information together. Anybody have any questions about that? No. I've actually used quite a few looking yep. at, at the parks now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And they are they are sturdy. Yeah. Yeah, they are sturdy. So okay. I do have a question. Yeah. So the the, the cleaning of it, that would be something that would go to Public works, public works. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm assuming that's going to be something we have to budget in also is the cleaning and the and the restocking and mm -hmm. all that. And do we have any idea of what we're looking at as far as that part of the budget? No, I don't know what it runs for um, down at North Bay because North Bay has a, mm -hmm. um, a the toilet system. So they have what two or three restrooms. So whatever it costs. Actually, I think there's more than that. So it's probably at least two stalls. It's at least one. two stalls in each wire. Yeah. So, um, you know, probably would have to. Then I do what they're what, already paying a lot of for that. Or I, I don't have a clue. I'd have to look at the budget. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. But John really seemed to like them and said they'd be pretty easy to maintain. So, like, okay. Um, all right. That's it for Chinook Toilets. So, we're moving on with that. That's great. Dog Park. Um, did we skip North Bay parking lot? It's we took it off because it's done. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I didn't hear that part. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. As uh, as they get completed, we take them off. Yeah, it says right here North Bay parking lot before Chinook toilets on the current agenda, November 9th, right? Oh, yeah, I can see it on mine. Okay, well, sorry, does that say North Bay parking lot? Gay Park, North State Parking Lot, Chinook Toilet Dog Park. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I was like, did Chinook Park confirm that date? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Mine does not. So, okay. Okay. Um, Mine um, not so. <laughs> all right. All right. Cool. Dog Park, again, uh, that's just an, the hope that City Council will approve our budget and approve the Dog Park budget. So, let's fingers crossed there. Same with the Chinook Playground equipment. Um, I did have Anna reach out to one of the playground equipment companies, a landscape structure, because I know that last meeting we had a lot of questions about the type of flooring that we would potentially put in mat versus a carpet versus chips. the chips. Mm -hmm. And so the I want each of them to have an opportunity to talk to us and discuss what would be best. And so Anna helped me out and called Chris from Landscape Structures. Play, play creation. Play creation. Playgrounds. Yeah, I talked to Chris. Nice guy. Um, he's very open to discussing it with us. What he is requesting is that we have a list of questions. Uh, and we can email that over to him to give him ample of time to research, give us a, the best answers he can give us. And then he'd like to uh, zoom in on the next month's meeting and uh, sit down and make sure that we're comparing apples to apples from all the different companies. So all we need to do is really come up with a list of, I, I would say as many questions as we can, and then we'll can, we can you know, pull back a little bit if we find out later, but I, I'd like to present him with as much information because he said he'll, he'll invest the time into giving us the best answers he can. Yeah, so um, I 
think what would work best is if you guys have questions, just email them to me and then I can put them together, compile them okay. and then send them yes. to Chris. Not everybody emailing Chris at the same time, no. that would be awful. So if you have some questions, get them to me and then I need to give him at least two weeks. So if you guys can give me questions in the next two weeks then I can get those over to him and give him time. Yeah. And he will be on our next meeting calls. yes and, and this is only for the um ground cover whatever yeah, it's we can ask any kind of any questions, questions. Oh, okay. i told him we were really asking a lot of questions about the ground cover so be prepared for that but also any questions we possibly well let's have. start from the ground and go up then. there you go <laughs> pun intended um so yeah so uh, what i'll do is since there was two different bids i will re-email you guys okay the bid from him so you know which one you're looking at so we're not asking questions about the other. He uh, he remembered us. He remembered our park. He remembered all the details about it. He was very inquisitive. Um, he really wanted to know what's the updates. He seemed like he was he was very workable. He wanted to know how can he help move this forward. And so, where's he at? Uh, Burien. I think he's Burien. Burien. Close enough there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was really, I really felt a good rapport with him and thought he was really eager to help. He said he would either, he even considered driving out here for the next meeting. He said he had to kind of check his schedule, oh, okay. but he's really adamant. To, I mean, I told him Zoom would be fine, but he was, you know, he yeah. was really adamant to helping us. And he December was, 14th. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I told him that day around 120 would be a good time to probably pop on and come in. So. And then maybe he can visit in the new year. Something. We can see how it works if, if he's chosen if it's chosen if it works out in the right. But it's nice if we can get apples to apples and really go through each one of these and get the same information from the different companies as opposed to kind of getting different scenarios with these. Yeah, companies. and my hope is then you know the next meeting we can have the other company on. There you so, go. Yeah, we can talk to them about one one at a time. Again, we this is still pending city council approval mm -hmm. uh, this money so well, but we got to get our ducks in a row we can try to kind of aim for the spring maybe is that any questions you guys over there that's on zoom does that make sense yeah Bob, does that make sense to you you know in those proposals the one thing that i did note that of the designs submitted that i thought there were too many with more than one slide. I thought one slide was adequate. Well, we're not talking about which one we're going to pick out. Um, but I'm just saying if you have any questions, in like I know that you were one of them that brought up the mat versus the carpet. So if you've got any specific questions that you want to ask play struct this play structure, um to, to get those to me <coughs> and ask them on the next meeting. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else, you guys, on Chinook Playground Equipment? Do you guys have anything else you want to add before we move on? Yeah. One quick question. Yeah. That what would in some a lot of our parks we just use gravel. Is is that not a consideration anymore? Uh, we use gravel for the playground. Structures. Well, yes, we uh, certainly around Milo and some of the other playground structures, there's just gravel. So um, I, I just, I'm just curious rather than going into another $10,000 expense in, in, in matting or carpeting, um, you know, well, why that, that would not be an option. That's all. That could be a question for him. Maybe okay. there's a, some studies out there that say that gravel, I, I, I don't know. My but, first question is, is there a recommended ground cover? Or is there a code that maybe has to be done now? Yeah. Maybe back when gravel was allowed, yeah. we, I mean, I feel like we could do better. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I mean, but maybe gravel used to be allowed and now we because found- Those parks are pretty old. Yeah, so maybe there's a new code. Is there some sort of city code that says you have to use a, at yeah, least one of these? But we can ask. So mm -hmm. just give me those questions and- I know the chips have to be a certain depth. Yeah, right, and a certain kind because it's not built for yeah. the bugs and stuff. Yeah. So, um, and a certain size too can't be like yeah beauty yeah yeah okay um okay anything else before we move on about like okay go ahead removal that's still on here because we've only had one of the two applications the next application is in the spring so um that first one was completed all's well so okay that's 
bit of the park budget requests. Uh, parks comprehensive plan, uh, the ad hoc committee, we didn't meet um, to continue on, but I mean, we still got a little time. So I think we're at it. our next section is 5.3, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, yeah, we took out 5.2, so we're on 5.3. All right, we're still working on it. How many points are there in five? No, no, no. I have it right here. Chapter five was big. <laughs> chapter five was big. So that was the biggest chapter. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling it's just going to be just a lot of taking away at this point. Um, yeah, let's see. The YMCA Summer Youth Program, I did email Francine. She is the director or CEO of the Y because they were supposed to get us questions, survey questions by the end of the month, beginning of this month asking her where we were with that. She did not respond to me. So um, I will send her another email, but we're waiting on those survey questions that we need to give to the community to see if they would be interested in having some kind of a program. Um, so we're kind of at a, a little stall right there, but it's a little, little one. So hopefully I'll, I'll email her again. I like to give people a little chance to a chance to respond. I don't like to keep emailing if I don't have to. Uh, any questions about this, that YMCA information? No. Do they have a deadline if we were to consider them for next year? Do they have some sort of a deadline that we need to uh, make a decision and get this locked in with them? Or if you don't know, she didn't say that, but she did, they did say, you know, we need to start it now because before you know it, Oh, of course. But, May is around. But if they, as I'm saying, if we keep pushing and we and we don't come to a resolution by May, is she going to say you're too late for the season? So now you got to go. I would season. think so. Probably. Right. But she didn't say what that was. Yeah, she didn't. Okay. Okay. No. Do we know what month they do this program? Uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. it's summer though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can assume, and it probably differs because they, you know, they schedule different. Different transportation. Uh, yeah. Transportation is really not the issue because that's why we have it at different parks. Okay. So most of the kids can walk or do they allow us to request what what month we would be best for our area? Okay. Do you have an idea? What do you I would think? think later, like in the summer a little bit. Um, like late July. Yeah, late July or early August, just for our area because that seems to be our our really I think it depends on where they are. It, I know they do other cities, so it depends on what they're doing in other cities and the time. And it's a good time to break up the break between that time we get out of school and when they start again, it kind of that middle spot yeah. to because so everybody wants that, that time break. Yeah, probably. So probably so. But for us, it's I think the weather being because we're so volatile with our weather out here. Is it a one week program? I think so. uh, there's there's some flexibility oh, okay. in that. So it's not all day, it's just a, a few hours. But I don't, I don't know yet. We're really in the early stages. Obviously, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're doing good. We're yeah. we're in the early stages of a lot. <laughs> we are. We'll get there. We're in the. But we're still forever. further along than we were a couple of years. Yes, ago. we there are. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for that. I'm happy. Um. All right. Next is the Northeast Grand Canal. Did anybody attend the city chat? Or I missed it. I'm sorry. My oh, cousin got did. <laughs> anybody on the board? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I ended up having a family emergency that I had to attend to. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Um, let's see. Well, I mean, anybody want to report that? <laughs> 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 they, just, they just did the same thing that they when they did the four That's hour meeting, here. and they uh, kind of um phoned it in and went like they did an overview of the things they found out here, and then they just gave another option for people to ask. Okay. more questions or you know give more opinion on it how was the turnout do you think probably about 30 35 people maybe not not large um not a pretty large one for city chats but uh i mean it was really just partially to show what, what the long-term plan is how how it might potentially work um ideas to talk about some ideas for funding mechanisms to make it a reality and to sort of also oh. just eliminate the whole misnomer that you know the city was going to write a check for 2.5 million dollars and start working on this thing that that's not what's happening so uh, i honestly thought it was, a, it was a good chat people ask good questions and it just kind of laid out what the long-term vision is why what, what would happen when it got incorporated into the parks department board's master plan and then what we could do moving on from there so thank you appreciate that mm -hmm. 
All right, so that's really, I know that's really kind of out of our hands. We can help them as much as they need to, but I think I think it's just back. Scott, is it just back with watershed? I mean, Scott. No, no. Okay, well, anyway. All right. Um, okay, so on to discussion. Um, so Sarah is requiring the agenda and meeting minutes about a week before our meeting. So I just want to let everybody know that if you need or want anything on the agenda, I'll need that about a week before. So just email me um, and just tell me what you want on the agenda. Um, before it was a little, I put it out to her the Monday before the meeting, but she's now needing it at least a week, sometimes a little bit more. It just depends on what that week is looking like for her, especially if city council's coming up so with a lot of extra budget. So she knows we could just pass it on. But I'm just saying, if, just keep that in the back of your mind. If you guys need anything on the agenda, make sure I know about it about a week before the meeting. Okay. okay. Does Fair that enough. make sense? All right. And then the other is um, if you, and I, I know life happens, life gets crazy, things happen, but if you're not going to be able to make the meeting or you're going to be late or something, just send me a text or give me a call. Even if it's at 1259 day of the meeting, I just need to know. So when I'm doing roll call and you're not on, I'm not wondering where you are, if it, you know, what's going yeah. on. I just need to know. So it's an excused absence versus an unexcused absence. The no show. Oh, no show, right. So, and again, I know life happens. We get busy, emergencies pop up. I get it. Uh, but if you have the ability just to text me, even day of, just let me know. Well, I have something to add to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, I missed the last meeting because I was in Mexico. Wasn't able to text you because we were... A hurricane came through and all the internet went out along with all with everything else so there was no way to i mean that is beyond my that is beyond any control i have mm -hmm. so and just so you just for your information uh in january i'll be in cambodia for three weeks so i will not be here and with a 16 hour time difference i'm not going to be able to i also won't be able to be on zoom okay. so maybe maybe you can put a note of make note of that Remember that. <laughs> I say that I'll remember it, but watch it. I won't. Remember. I'll help you remember yeah. that. <laughs> and then you can help me remember that. <laughs> I'll put it the so, so nobody, <laughs> nobody can remember that. But okay, you got it. That's exactly it. That was a good job. <laughs> Thank you. No, Ed, we got you. Ed. Thank you. Um, we just wanted to get that on record. So I you have an official good record. Job. Good job. Uh, okay. So um, anything else? To report for me. Uh, not really. No, just kind of chipping away at our parks request. Um, that's it. Anna, do you have anything? Not not park inspection, just anything in general to report. Um, I know that we've been making momentum, but I am just kind of a thought. Maybe uh, moving forward, we may see a little bit of a slowdown in the momentum because we are coming into the holidays. And it does kind of seem like the world kind of slows down a little bit in November's and December's because everybody's holiday orientated. So we may see a little bit more slowing down or getting some responses, just something to kind of keep in the back of our minds. But I feel yeah. like it's already starting to happen a little bit. And um, yeah, that's true. So, I mean, like keep moving forward, but we may find the next few months. So let's not get discouraged and just kind of keep that, keep trying. Yeah, like people not replying to emails. <laughs> yeah, and, and being, yeah, well, yeah, and uh, things like that. We just end on holidays and travel, and people are, yeah. you know, out of town. And I just let's not lose that, you know, that momentum mentally, even though everything else is kind of slowing down. So. Okay. Yeah. Good to remember. Thank you. Uh, Chris, anything to report? No. Okay. <laughs> sure. Sweet. Ed, anything to report? Well, no, I just want to say thank you to both you and Lisa for finding the time to get to the bank to sign the paperwork so that our foundation bank account is actually legit. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah. Well, don't, don't be sorry. It was, it, it, an accident. I, I was saying, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay. Uh, Addison, do you have anything general to report? 
nothing to report, um, but was curious if you already covered, I know I jumped on a little bit late, um, the uh, skate park bid status, did that just go through? Okay, I did great. I did cover that. So just in a nutshell, um, Roglins is writing up a bid for repair. We just haven't gotten it yet. Okay. And Sounds good. I hope that it's going to, the bid's going to be what we budgeted. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Great. Um, and so the puppy in the background. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Um, all right. And last, Bob Rose, do you have anything to report? Well, I had a question regarding the skate park. There is that true that Roglins may support may submit a bid? Did you? Yes. That's yes. Roglins is submitting a bid. Yes. Does that answer your so question? So if it's over our threshold. If it's over the threshold, can we go to the council for? Um, I don't know, Scott. Lisa, I don't know. I know you that. Can... We... <laughs> well, I can what? guarantee it's going to be way over what we apportioned. And that's going to be the key as well. Because we were, we, we, we were mean, not I'm... considering any labor. I can't speak for the council what they want to do, and that depends on what way is. But um, I mean, yeah, you're free to uh, to take that forward to council. So, so Scott, so Scott, if uh, if we budget eight thousand and Roglins comes in at sixteen thousand, and I I'm just putting numbers out there, so we go to council and say, hey, we got this one bid. We sent it out to a bunch of people, but we got one back, and it's this much money. Can we have the money? Yeah, yeah, and then it, and then it kind of depends on on your budget, the parks budget, like how much of that budget would it eat up? Because we don't want to do a budget adjustment, obviously, uh, for that. So you know, if you, if you have sixteen thousand in the parks budget, um, and that's what you chose to spend it on, then we can, you know, council might be willing to do that adjustment. I. But if you have eight thousand and this bid comes in for sixteen thousand, if you truly wanted to go forward, it would be a request. And then it would say budgeted amount and does it need a budget adjustment? And then the council would approve, okay. like, hey, we'll take 8,000 out of the general fund and put it in this line item okay. to give you that 16. Okay. All right. Well, then, Bob, does that answer your question? Yeah, I hope that it's a priority that we get it repaired. So let's hope that it can come through and get the project done. Okay. Any other, any other questions, Bob? And about that, okay, no, Anna, you have going on to Bob's question about the skate park, um, you and I talked briefly about the Tony Hawk um, yeah. grant, and is that something that we would want to pursue um, before we actually went forward with fixing the park, or is that something that the park is such a priority right now that we're going to, if we come out over budget, if, our, if the um, if the bid comes in over budget, we're just going to kind of put, we don't have the time to, to try to facilitate that. And just, Okay, so what Anna is talking about is a what if situation. So if we can't get the skate park repaired, what do we do? That was just kind of a question that came out. And so I had mentioned that there is a grant opportunity through the Tony Hawk. It's called, it's not called the Tony Hawk Foundation anymore. Tony Hawk was a professional uh, skateboarder. Um, it's called the Skate Park Foundation grant. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so anyway, they they fund through grants um, new skate parks in underprivileged communities. Uh, so it, to answer your question, it would have to be a, a new skate park, mm -hmm. um, that. not a repair. We don't do right. repair. So no, a video of our skate but, park. Well, we're trying to, oh, well, first things possible. first, right? We're trying to repair what we have. Then if we decide at some point that we, you know, we've had some community outreach, people have requested that maybe we take a look and redo the skate park, we then go to the, you know, pursue the grant, the, the grant avenue uh, with the Tony Hawk. So, so we're kind of putting the cart before the horse a little bit mm -hmm. before we're, we're just trying to get this done, mm -hmm. but for the next budget, 
we didn't ask for a new seed park for the next budget. So um, it would have to come to grant. So I don't really know if that's answering your question, but no, just that, wondering where that was fitting in. So if, if we can't, if we don't have the amount of money that we, this one bid comes in at um, and we can't get there, then what was going to, I just kind of want to know what is our next idea to, or is yeah. this just going to get dormant? Are we going to say, okay, what, what do we have planned moving forward? Well, if, I don't know. I don't want to, there's like too many what if scenarios because we don't even know what, what the bid's going to work. Bid's going to come in at yet. So let's just cross that bridge. Put that down uh, as a next meeting agenda item because uh, we should have the bid yeah. by the next meeting. So then we can take a look at yeah. that and maybe make a decision on whether if it's over to proceed with trying to cover that over additional expense or look at other options. Um, I'm really familiar with the Skate Park Foundation as well and did a lot of research into um, that organization in the past. So I'm happy to assist with any grant writing if that is something we do in the future. But for now, I think, yeah, let's just wait until we get the bid back before making any decisions. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, go ahead, Chris. When the bid does come in, can you let us know what it came in at? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Not, I don't want to wait until next month. Oh, no, no, no. I'm curious. I can, uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? Something just popped in my mind, and actually, Addison has to do with you. You had asked for an overview of Chinook Park, an aerial view, because looking at maybe revamping the park to a yeah. I got the overview. Um, I have the aerial footage from uh, Rob. He sent that to me right before he took off. Okay. Um, so yes, I have that. I haven't gotten a chance to really do much with it, but if that's still something we're looking into, then happy to. But I mean, it yeah. did kind of look like the existing locations were kind of the probably the recommended spots. But if we wanted to still play around with that, I can. Uh, bring that to our next meeting yeah could you because uh mm -hmm. because now with the flushable toilets we have those dimensions yeah that's look true look like and then um you know i know a dog park is high on everybody's list and so we kind of need to map that out so we can take that to bid to find out how much it's going to cost our fencing and and the concrete pathway and the new and parkings if we put the toilet where i think we're going to put it we might have to we might, I don't, we have to figure out some parking. I think yeah, it's just that's... gonna have to look at that park and redo it with the stuff that we want. I think so too. Maybe come up with a couple different layouts and different yeah. plans yeah. for different yeah. budget price points. Yeah. I know every yeah. time you move something a foot, it only feels like a foot, but you're talking a foot more concrete, a foot more mm -hmm. power line, right. a foot more trenching, right. everything. Right, absolutely. So yeah. uh, that, well, that, I have yeah. some, uh, huge yard measures too so i mean if anyone ever wants to go out and then we can get some uh, precise dimensions otherwise i could probably get my wife to come out and help me uh, get dimensions there that. okay yeah, my, yeah i would totally do that yeah that'd be all fun. right i'll just uh, connect with you on timing and yeah we can get some more precise dimensions and actually maybe, maybe do some maybe. site concept designs yeah. and i can probably if we give them enough time maybe john wagner might be able to Give us about 30 minutes of his time. And bring the 200 foot measuring tape. Yeah, <laughs> the, the I think, measuring. Yeah, I think he, he has a that. different tape. It's not a yeah. standard one. Yeah, yeah. Standard yeah. One, but... you got the, the yeah no, I have a, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's either, it's either 100 or 200, but if not, I mean, they're pretty easy to pick up at Ace. Yeah, they're pricey. <laughs> My cousin bought one not too long ago because he <laughs> left his at home. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a pretty long one, so I have one that rolls out that's made just for that sort of thing. So I think it's probably two or three hundred feet. So okay. great. So if you, great. You know, I'm going to be out of I'm going to be out of the country for a week. That's why I'm not here today because we're leaving tomorrow. But I'll be back in a week. And if and I'd be happy to also, if you'd like, to go up to Sh I I only live down the street from it, so. Be Sounds happy good. to go to Chinook and and we'll get the tape out and we can look at it. I personally don't think parking is a huge issue because it, there could be parking all along the trees, in between the trees on both sides. I mean, I don't know what you that you would have to do anything special for parking, but that's the just challenge is the boats and people parking trailers. Well, that yeah, but 
it's the boats coming in, I understand, but there's, as you come into the park, as you come into Chinook on both sides, there is, there's room for parking. You could park, I mean, you're, you're only looking at short-term parking. I mean, people aren't gonna be out there in the dog park for three hours. So uh, there's, there's lots of room along the, the entrance of the park. So we, but we could look at that, you know, and, and see if that would work or not. I don't think we'd actually need to, to make the parking lot bigger. So, but again, we could look at it and see where that goes. The, the idea is to keep costs down, right? Well, the idea, Ed, is to make sure, so I disagree with you a little bit. So we might have to make parking bigger because if we add the dog park, you've already got the boat launch, which is popular. The fish and people fish there. People park yes. their car dock and they have the fishing shack and then you add the dock park and then you possibly are going to add the exterior walking path and then you're adding the playground you're you need more parking you need designated parking you know to really well, show people where they can park so that people aren't well, well they can be all all more. right but and i agree with that but i do think there are other places and actually having to extend the parking lot bigger but again, the best way to look at that is if we all get out there with the tape measure, take a look at it and, and see what could be done right in, into that, you know, uh, 100 yards of entrance to the parking lot and to the, to the lake. You know, there is a lot of, there's a lot of unused space on both sides of the driveway there. But again, let's look at it and see, you know, maybe, maybe this wouldn't work. Maybe we would have to enlarge the parking lot. But if we didn't, that would certainly save a lot of money. Yeah, well, we, you and I can't go out there and figure out what's going to be good for parking. We would need somebody that's educated with how parking probably would work. All right. So, well, let's just, let's just plan to go out there and look at it and, and make a decision then. I am a certified planner again for everyone's memory. Okay, so let's go out there and take a look. Okay. Let's make a park board field trip date and, and meet then there. It's a meeting. Yeah. We can't do that. We'd have to have a special meeting. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> let's just do the measuring first. We'll figure it out. <laughs> but okay. I think we need parking. So that's that's my thought on that. I have one more Chinook question yeah. while we're on the subject. Did the neighbor who uh, was talking about the continued fence, did we ever figure look that up? That problem out? No, no. Uh, you mean the north and from the lake? Right, because she because she has people going under her dock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, I figured when uh, we we have to refence all of mm -hmm. anyway, and so I let John know. So we'll probably continue that fencing down. Uh, what she's talking about is there is the neighbor that uh, her house is right next to Chinook Park, and the fence. Barry, the fence line stops pretty short. And so people walk through Chinook and onto her property and onto her dock, thinking it's an extension of Chinook Park. Um, so she has to ask people to get off her dock a lot. So she had asked when we had went out and asked the uh, residents if, about Chinook Park and if you know they wanted a dog park, if that would be a problem. Anyway, she's just let us know that she would like to see the fencing continue down. And I figured that probably wouldn't be a problem. How about a private property sign on it? It just stepped into the ground. That stops nobody, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no trespassing, private property stops nobody. It keeps uh, the honest people out. <laughs> That's all it does. But anyway, um, <laughs> all right. Bad. So park park reports. Um, I've got TechSmart added because Bob, you're out. That's that's the same. Uh, nothing. Chinook, Spinnaker, TechSmart are all, all good to go. So, uh, Anna, your two parks. Um, review the potholes are back, of course. Um, okay. I've got some pretty good sized ones. Um, but everything else is fine. So, just that might need to get a little gravel or something to put in there because we do that every year about this time when the good rains. Yep, get a hold of it. And, um, South Grand is fine. Okay, perfect. Um, Chris. Emerson looks good. Uh, North Bay is looking fine. Nothing. I, I was concerned. Somebody's taken the picnic tables out of the shelter and, and just moved them all around. And there's, you know, it's like people are. 
Okay. And I don't know if they need to be kind of put back into the shelter now that if the weather's getting worse. Yeah. Okay. And then limpet is good. Okay, great. Ed? Well, uh, everything's the same. Uh, Milo certainly hasn't changed. And we're working on, hopefully working on the skate park. So that's my report. We're working on it. <laughs> well, I know, I know. That's That's what I'm saying. No, it's just that I had to make it, or miss it at uh, the North Grand Canal. I was hoping to get out there, but yeah, unfortunately things came up. But uh, otherwise, right now, I mean, the park's looking good for this time of year. Um, yeah, the, following the last meeting, there are some reports of people potentially homeless living in that area. Um, and yeah, that does look what's going on. I don't know what we do with that. But anyway, um, that's about all with North Grand Canal and then uh, Gunnarsson looks good. Awesome, thank you. Um, oh, Bob, I should have taken you off, but we got you, Bob. Yeah. Uh, Lisa, do you have anything to report from council? I have nothing new to report except on Monday night, we'll be reading the budget. So hopefully that will be approved and we'll have some more answers at the next Parks Board meeting. Oh, so this Monday? Yep, this yep, Monday. Monday, yeah. Well, maybe cool. I attend that meeting. Okay. <laughs> Should be fun. All right. Sometimes I, I watch on Zoom. So. Um, okay. Can we touch back on what Addison just said as far as the North Grand about somebody living in there? Yeah. What do we discuss with that? I mean, it is part of the parks, but that is a that is a community situation that we need to draw I felt like the I feel like the powers that be were aware I mean public works is aware I don't know about it's across the street from the police station they drive by it all the time so they have to be aware but nothing's it's not really our jurisdiction for homelessness but if there's an issue we just take it to the I would just take it to John Wagner and have him do what you need to do report it i mean we don't have i talked to randy peck a couple of days ago and he was saying that some there's some new ordinance that he's writing up that's going through regarding the homeless or what's going to be pushed through i don't know who he submits that to so, or that goes on. so your question is though if if we come across this and um, we're doing our park inspection who do we report it to is that your question i'm just wondering as somebody as as a group that is supposed to be monitoring and, and overseeing the yeah. parks and, and and I now we're being aware that we have an ad, uh, an adamant problem with that advisory board. Right. Are, but so. don't we want to be advising a little more to tell somebody, hey, we need to actually do something about this? Or do we want to yeah, if we, if we turn a blind eye, it looks like we're not paying well, attention to the parks. I don't yeah. think we're turning a blind eye. We're just reporting on parks. So, I mean, if there's a, a tree that's fallen over or something that's counting on this, we've got, we just do our report and we report it to whoever. So that would go to John Wagner. but. When it comes to a homeless person, and this is a good situation, I mean, should I mean we don't have a we don't have a public works director. So uh, Scott, should we let you know, Scott? So here's the thing with the parks okay. is that it is public property, right? So because we do not have a homeless shelter here, right. and we have nowhere to send them, right? You can't tell them they cannot be there, right? Okay, so yeah, uh, specifically, it's written into your park. And into your park code, it's terms of no public camping overnight, which you yeah. can enforce in your parks if it's in your code. If they're Let's drinking likewise in the park or doing other activities like drugs, and that, then it's a criminal charge, but you can't just remove them from being homeless. And now when the cop, they have to see them doing the drugs to do anything. How do we get this written into our code then? A lot of these things are written into the code, but it's a matter of enforcing them. The new legislation, the cops have to witness them doing these things. Somebody having their sleeping bag and sitting in a park, that doesn't mean they're camping there overnight. Overnight, right. Like they have to physically oh. see them doing the drugs to arrest them or remove them. Or Yeah, I mean, wow. May not be the answer you want, but there's really not much we can do from an advisory board. I never, I never, yeah, especially from an advisory board. Well, from an advisory board, yeah, but I'm also saying that, I mean, as part of the advisory board, 
um, I would like to think that the community as a whole also looks to us to for answers. And I think that there's probably somebody out there at some point who's going to say, what is the parks board caring or doing or thinking yes, about this problem? I agree. And I think that if they don't see that we are at least aware of it and wanting to know ourselves how we can help um, uh, the community address this problem, then I, I feel like if we're hopeless and what tells anybody else that they should. Do it. So I'm just asking what can we do? Um, and can wait, report it to code enforcement and okay. report okay. it as a code violation. Um, it's been it's up to them what they do with that. And then again, to Sarah's point, according to state legislation, there's not much they likely can or will be able to do. You can ask Lisa. She knows all about the homeless in Aberdeen. <laughs> there, are, there are definitely things you can do. If you have, uh, like your parks are closed at after 10 p.m., then if they're witnessed in the park, that is a violation. Um, but you typically can't kick them off public places, yes, but if your, your parks, if you have it in your code, you can enforce that. They can go to a, a sidewalk or another public area, but you could enforce it in your parks if it's in your code. Okay. You know, without addressing the homeless issue as a whole, you're just going to move them from one place to another. That's the bottom line. So they have nowhere to go. If you kick them out of one park, they'll go to another park, they'll go to the beach. We have no resources here. So there's really, our hands are pretty much tied when it comes to that. All right. Um, let's see. Well, that's, that's all I have for this meeting. Anybody else? Uh, let's see, Scott, anything new on city engineers or public works directors? Uh, no, we, we uh, interviewed for, on Monday, we interviewed three candidates for a project manager for the public works department. Uh, oh. I believe we've settled on one of those candidates uh, who will be responsible for um, implementing, you know, our projects and, and moving forward on that. But we should have more on that within the next next couple of days. Oh, great. Okay. That's exciting. Yep. Um, it's been difficult to find and we're not the only cities having problems with this. We've heard from other cities around the, the, even the harbor. Alma has had a very difficult time finding an engineer or um, anyone who does project management there. So it's, it's just not, a, it's, you know, we still have 3.8% unemployment. So it's, uh, it's not a, not a great time to, uh, not a wide variety to choose from. And then of course, being in Ocean Shores, we're, we're isolated geographically. So places like Elma can at least get people from Olympia that want to day commute. It's kind of hard to day commute to Ocean Shores. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, okay, so future next meeting is Wednesday, December 14th at one o'clock. Um, and I'll just kind of remind you guys that the, and I'll remind you again, but the January meeting we've discussed as a whole to have it at six o'clock at night. So that'll be a special meeting. Just kind of put that in the back of your mind. Um, it is 147. I need a motion to adjourn. I make that motion. I second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.